Howdy here and welcome to Nebs Gaming. Today we are here in the terracotta biome. Why? Because I'm after, well, I'm on the hunt for coal. Why do I need coal to make steel? Why do we make want to make steel? Well, this episode we are of course moving on to the thermal evaporation controller in order to get our lovely bit of lithium. Where is it? Where is it? Well, lithium somewhere around here. I need lithium to make those batteries that, if you remember in the last episode, what we did. So in this episode, I'm on the hunt for coal. And I've made this mine. If we take a quick, cheeky, quick look over here. I've made this mine, which has stopped in a minute. I started off with a little bit down there, just to see the speed and do some testing. And now I've made this nice, simple design. One single water pump into a tank, which is constantly getting filled by the capacity. And then three different outputs here. All into combustion engines powered by the fuel that we make over in our com uh, distillery center. So I'm just currently going to check through all of these to get the coal that is required. And then we're going to head back over to the road area so we can make start making that steel. I've actually made quite a, well, got quite a bit of coal and a cheeky bit of bath salt as well coming through. Fantastic. So I'll see you over at the road. So I actually found something out right now which is amazing i didn't realize you could enrich coal and why would i want to enrich coal well i'll show you why if we whack some coal into there and whack some coal into there look at that it splits it for you straight down the middle just here we go we get these compressed carbon now like we have the uh, compressed diamond in here it gives us that little bit of an extra boost so that extra boost is required required for our next door neighbor if we pop it into our uh, in like ore chamber that we've currently got going on right now uh, is that finished oh no you're still smelting away there you go have you got enough energy plenty of energy uh, but if we go over to our infusing chamber we can actually dump that in there and look how much it fills up with a lot left over so we've pretty much just created an ultimate supply of carbon right there over just two stacks so now I'm going to get a hell of a lot of steel ingots which I probably should make a chest for um, oh in fact can I place one on top like that and then configure it do the output above will you work or do I have to uh, configure it somehow Transport config, output, input, off, auto eject, on, yes, there we go, so that's going to put me to that chest up there now, I don't need any of these, the reason I put these in, I just like to see movement, I like to see movement, uh, in the future builds we're going to have um, a bit more tidier and things like that, but for now, we're going to have it like this, and we're going to collect all the steel in order to make these thermal evaporation things because they require a lot of steel they also re require a lot of copper so i'm going to go back around looking through all my mines get some copper get some iron on the go start producing steel and then we can start the evaporation area so now we've got enough steel and copper to start making the basics of our well our systems evaporation systems what's it called the thermal evaporation uh so we're going to get the basics done on that we're going to start with these blocks here and we're going to just pace out how we are actually going to have it so if we head over to the old crafting i could go next door and put in the automatic crafter but i'm not going to we're going to make 64 of these because why not and it makes four and we've got four stacks of it because uh, we can do it future i believe we can have these actually 18 high off the top of my head hmm, that's a lot i know but uh, hey and um, what what else were we going to need um if we have a look in here so the thermal we need a controller so that's going to take an advanced controller some glass a glass pane actually and a bucket which can get easy and then we need a valve which is again just a valve circuit i'm not sure how many we get if we make one of them so i'm going to go and start crafting these up and then we'll lay out the area where we're going to actually create this thing uh which is over there next to the bank first things first i need to sleep so i'm in the area where i am going to build these gas chambers as such these evaporation chambers so what we need to make as i said earlier was we need to make one thermal evaporation chamber we'll click one of those badges that's going to be the controller and then we need a few of these thermal uh what are they called for thermal valves now i'm going to create a couple of these because we need an input we need an output and possibly two outputs depending on what we are making so one more there we go fan dabby dozy 
And I've gone for this area near the bank here. And to start things off, I'm going to place one right here. Because we need the base to be three wide. And then we can start building up around it like so. And the higher we make it, the more we'll be able to put in. Now, one thing we need to make sure... Uh-oh, I had it on vain. Oh, no, I need to click off that. There we go. So, I'll rebuild this. Now, the one thing we need to make sure of is when we're building this is we have this thermal controller actually on a level up from the ground, otherwise it won't work. So, I'm going to place it here at the front. And then, as we progress, depending on what we require, we can have different ones of these looping around in a nice circle there. So I'll have one here, and then we'll have storage item, maybe some tanks, which we can fill up all the way to the top there, leaving room for a wall and a walkway in between. Fabulous. Right, let's get this built up. That's two chambers all filled. Well, not filled, created. Now we just need to put in the water in the back, connect these up, and then start producing the gases that we want. Now we're going to have hydrogen chloride possibly coming out the first one, and then we're going to have lithium coming out the second one, and then we're going to figure out where to go from there. So the first thing I did was actually install a actual windmill and pump here in order to pump the full fuel into the evaporation chamber. As you can see it is slowly filling up and if we go over to the other side it is slowly making the brine we require. I next then connected the external brine pipe into the internal input of the electrolytic separator and then realized I've got no power for these machines yet so hooking up the power I then went to check on it and it is now producing some chlorine now I just need to make the electrolytic separator here to produce hydrogen and then we can power this and start making hydrogen chloride I then realized that I put the uh, wrong items into either side of the Infuser there because I had these wrong facing the wrong way. So I need to create myself a gouge. I need to create myself a gouge dropper in order to get them all out. Once I use this gouge dropper to get all the unneeded and incorrect doors out, I then start installing the new hydrogen and the chlorine in order to produce myself hydrogen chloride. Ah, through my, through my gouge away in order to start quadrupling my ores. As we can see here, the sodium going in is very, very good and the, well, the hydrogen that's getting pumped in is even better. Uh, it could be, I suppose it could be a little bit better. Uh, we can, we'll upgrade this for speed and everything, uh, but in the meantime, it's doing well and we're utilizing enough speed for this. And it's slowly going up, slowly. I've got canisters here just in case. But if we look in here, we can see that we're only making not even half a mega bucket of actual brine. And we are at a height of 13. Now, I have gone higher and I've noticed that it did increase a little bit, but not enough. So I have made a couple of things. I've made a fuel wood heater uh, and I've also added uh, something on top as well. Um, I added one of these on top because apparently a couple of these help to uh, increase the speed. Uh, I have yet to see. Uh, I have yet to see that because it hasn't gone up a lot. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually add a fuel wood heater, and this should increase the speed or the temperature up by a certain amount. Now this just works on simple stick some fuel in there, and it'll actually power and insert heat. What we do is connect one of these connected pipes, and then that should start bumping up the heat going into this thermal evaporation chamber. Now I've also got one of uh, a chest here that I'm going to fill with items that we can actually use and I'm going to transport them just with the basic logical pipe. There we go, it's now transporting all the logs or planks that we got from our uh, uh, saw mill thing over there, our saw mill machine over there and it's now increasing the temperature. Now it's do not doing it a lot uh, we've got what 363 in there. We've also got a lava field behind here But for now, we're just going to use some basic planks in order to heat this just to increase that brine and look at that now The brine is absolutely flying in and we are producing a hell of a lot more and as the heat increases the more mega butts mega bucks mega buckets will increase the more brine we can actually pass out 
Now I just need to work out now how to get this brine into here in order to make the lithium. There we go, we're producing enough brine now, it is actually flowing through into here and it'll slowly start filling up with little lithium as that brine actually goes up. And I'm going to do the same again, I'm going to place a, where is it, I'm going to place a fuel wood heater right next to it in order to transfer that heat. Not there, but on, on top here, in order to transfer that heat through and uh, start uh, well start producing lithium so we can make that big battery now in order to get this lithium out which is now currently full what we'll do is we will pipe this into this a rotary condensator which we will be able to turn into a lithium and then into a lithium powder in there so let's uh, crack on getting this sorted with a toggle here it should start working there goes in the liquid lithium and then we should slowly start seeing this lithium be produced in this area here now what we're going to do is once we've done that we're going to bump it into here and that'll make the lithium dust and then we're going to have a nice little chest just below so that can go into it and then we'll be able to start making our batteries and yes i've got my jet back on so i can uh, actually fly about now and i'm absolutely loving this thing Whoop. now we've got some hydrogen chloride we can quadruple our ores thanks to this little extra machine here the chemical injection see over here we create the hydrogen chloride which then gets pumped underneath the floor to the chemical injection area which if we place something in there we will get for these gold shards the reason it's so fast is because we've got these in there and i'll explain in a little while why we are doing that so these are now producing the gold shards in the purification chamber that's four instead of three now there we go and it'll just get pumped out here and into these chests over here now the input is this simple machine well this simple chest here is the input where all the ores will get pumped into this chemical injection chamber and then we will get the output behind going into these two chests here fantastic now that's the easy bit that is the easy bit the, why do we need so much gold though well the reason we need so much gold is because i want to do these uh, so we got osmium the energy upgrade now the reason I want to do the energy upgrade like me need an energy now We'll have a quick sleep. Oh look at that moonrise And look at that sunrise, but oh, there we go There's a gold bar going across but um the reason I want a lot of gold is because of these here The energy upgrade now this makes it run better on less energy so I need to create a lot of these for every single machine in this place here because we are not producing enough energy. As you can see here, it hardly fills, but because it has the eight upgrades in there, that's 10 times efficiency, we don't need to use a lot of energy. And again, I'm using windmills here. We will use it for the pumps, for the lithium chamber, uh, lith uh, for the evaporation chamber, sorry. And then we'll need it for these two here, the electrolytic separator for the brine and we'll need it for the infuser as well just so we can have enough fuel and that pumping through now you're probably wondering where is the best place to get gold ore the best place to get gold ore is over here in the terracotta area or the badlands uh, people call it as well um so if we have a quick look down here you can see my mine is pumping away and we've already got a bit of gold there we've got some more gold there which i'll expand to later on but again i'm just using the simple setup where we've got water going in three combustion engines uh all getting well cooled with the water and then it's just getting pumped into all these chests along here which we will by the looks of it need to increase our storage capacity very very shortly uh, but this is where I'm getting the majority of my gold from at the minute. Ooh, big hole. So I am going to wait until we've got enough gold and enough upgrades so we can fully upgrade our first factory completely. And then we'll move on to the next project in this episode. Well, would you believe it? I wouldn't have only gone and upgraded. Everything's got all the energy and speed upgrades in there now. So we should be producing a lot more and a lot faster. Of course, the limiting factor will be 
the output of this evaporation chamber or slash block and of course with the uh, power now where uh, we don't actually have to worry about it too much I think this will be our limiting factor this area here with all the ores that are getting processed but we'll come to that issue when it arises because at this minute in time the speed and these and the gas efficiency are all maxed out so while that's all smelting away I'm going to start building up the uh, corner over here and maybe move on to this building here where the mine is as well um, just so we can have a bit more structure in place as we go along so it's not all looking out in the open and I don't have mobs spawning in on me left right and center uh, and then we'll start moving on to our power storage which will be over here that's our first building done we have actually gone in and covered up the uh what's it called we the sawmill and the osmium compressor look at that we uh got some wood in there actually go going away and we're getting all the sawdust as well i've increased the storage as we saw earlier uh we we're increasing the storage nice and slowly there um i'm going to slowly work it away around because we're going to have a lot hence why we've got all this we can just build multiple layers for multiple layers of storage and i've laid out the uh well where the height of it should be on each one of these why i'm so small i of course transferred into my fire bat so i can zoom about but it does use a lot of hunger so i am constantly eating but that is our first house house on shingle row right i need to go and get some brimstone because this is going to be the base of the next building and some birch wood and then we can set up the next house house no building oh god the back is so flat but we don't look at the back we don't look at the backs of buildings this area here is going to be a library which i'm going to encase all the bookshelves uh all the different types we're going to have some different types of books in there and if we actually go on the biblio we have like acacia uh acacia a little uh, what are they called acacia grandfather clocks and different jungle cases we even have framed furnitures we've got some lovely little lamps there Fancy lamps that we're actually going to place I'm easily made of that, but we need glowstone, so that's another run. Uh, but we're going to use fancy lamps along the high street just to just to make the street light up a tiny bit more. But for now, I'm going to move on to the next building here uh, after I've gone and got some brimstone. And standing at the top of our villager trading hall here, we have our next building complete. Oh wow, look at this! I've seen. Compared to this one where there's a tiny bit more detail, instead I've gone for complete blocks and limited detail just because of the size of the building and I've used some chain link uh, glass there, oh, is it? Yeah, let's call it chain link, but it's chain glass anyway for the windows and I think that accompanies the build very well. We've used the brimstone on the bottom again with birch. I didn't think it was going to look good next to it, but now I am actually content with how this has actually turned out. Whoop, nearly fell off there, luckily I'm in my back. But inside again... We have left a massive open area. If we go inside here, you can see that it reaches high as the eye can see. Plenty of areas where we can do little, um, well, almost, we can do plenty, almost three floors. Um, one, two, three, yeah, three floors with a smaller upper floor here if needed. Or we can just go straight up with all the storage required once we have, uh, well, once this mine, digital miner is finished. We'll see what we have. So what is left? What is left? We have this building here to uh, complete. And then we'll move on to our next building there. That'll be one for next episode. But this episode, we want to concentrate on getting the lithium for the energy storage, which is going to be here. And I intend to fill this block up here with all st different... Well, I want to make it as big as possible, really. Um, so we are going to go through here now and collect some lithium and start making the required batteries which is i believe if we type in mech and then we go to here this is what we want basic induction cells we need to start making all of these to store they now it stores mrf but if we go up one level to advance as you can see it goes to grf straight away uh, but it utilizes an advanced energy cube so as we go up obviously that'll be the increase of that now I'll sort out my FOV so we could actually see the area. I'm going to start creating the batteries and seeing how big or how much resources we have to make a bigger energy storage system there. 
I have also decided I am going to make my nether portal now. I'm, I'm always using the community home one and it is in a very, very dangerous position. So I'm going to use this one here and where I said I was going to put, make a library, I'm now going to build the nether portal to get some nether brick to make the next buildings. Wow, wish me luck. Now it's a bit noisy I know, but can we light this up with the flamethrower? I've got to be very, very careful though that I don't set the place on fire. Yeah, we can. Ooh. Let's jump in and see where it takes us. Oh, it uses the communal homes portal. That's not good. I wanted my own one. Surely I'm not that close to it. That is a real shame. That is a real shame. I was hoping to find a different place. Ah, uh, well. Let's change this to uh, Vein Mine and let's see what chaos we can. Well, that's not good. Quick change to the bat. Where's me bat? 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 Fire bat. There we go. I'm at the bottom now. Look at that. That was close. That was very, very close. We're going to slowly start making our way up now through the lava. Oh, that was very, very dangerous. That was very, very dangerous indeed. This is definitely a death trap. I am breaking this. I am breaking this because it is just too... This is too much of a deadly place. I don't want to be here anymore. We need to make a new one. Oh, wait. I can't break this because I won't be able to get out. Now, our nether adventure, we got a few blocks. If we have a look here, we can start off. We got two different types of new tree. The dark wood sapling and the ghost wood sapling. Now, I'm not sure. I don't think we can actually chisel these blocks, but we'll check anyway. If we do that, no. Nope. But we'll type ghost wood and we can produce the usual stuff like that. Oh, the trap door actually stays a different color trap door. That's nice. And we can, uh, oh, we can make fairy lights as well. And the ghost wood barrel. That crafting table is quite nifty as well. But let's check out the dark wood. What color have we got there? Dark wood. There we go. It's a nice, vibrant blue, which I do like. Luckily, we got oh, we only got two saplings because we only found two while we're in the nether. But that trap door is quite... That's a different style and different model. Fantastic. But that's not what we want to see. Can we chisel magnet blocks? No. Can we chisel nether rack? Yes. We can, but again none of the brick it's raw meat oh lovely we can chisel it all into that we can create some blue shale though which is good but we need to smelt all this into nether brick let's check our bag as well again we got a few ores oh we got some cobblestone there i didn't check if we could chisel that can we no we can't but what if what if i went nope nope Let's see if we can smelt it. I know we're meant to be making batteries in this or energy storage, but I just can't help myself. I really just can't help myself. I like to do a bit of testing. So let's see if we can smelt this cobblestone, can we? Yes, we can. Ooh. Uh, and then we'll go stick you in there for smelting as well. We'll fill you up, get you smelting away. I also found some bone block while I was out and about. Let's see if we can... Nope, we can't make anything that, but what can we make bone out of? What is it used for? Bone. So we can make a stone brick. How do we make a bleached bone stone brick? Look, we've even got it there as well. So for polished, how do we make a polished one? We smelt bone cobblestone. How do we make bone cobblestone? Well, it doesn't tell us. Rock crushing, maybe? Hmm. Interesting. We'll figure that one out as well. Let's go check over here. We've got our nether brick coming in, so let's make our first nether brick, and then we'll jump over to the, no, we'll jump over the chisel. There we go. We've got the different types now. We've got the different types of nether brick, which we can actually start building how building the next layer out of. Ooh, I think I'm gonna go for this nether brick there. So I'm gonna leave that pumping away, and then I'm gonna move on to the power storage. So with the numbies on the little noisy zombies in the background there we have created this induction cell chamber thing now I think I've built it right I think I have I'm not sure whether these need to be directly on the end so we can access them but we're gonna soon find out I'm going to hook this up now to the uh, whole windmills just a nice straight line of these uh, cables and we should ah! yes no yes actually uh, let's go 
down like that. Straight along. Okay. Straight along like that. Now, in theory, these should start filling up. That's that's the theory of it. That's the theory of it. These should start filling up now. It would appear they're not. Okay, I uh, may have figured out why it wasn't working. I didn't fill in the top here. Uh, so now, in theory, we should be able to click on this now. Yes, there we have it. And we can actually start inputting some energy into the induction matrix. And as there you can see, it is slowly beginning to fill up over time. I did have to turn off my digital miner over there, but it is working. And then we'll change this side to the output. Yes, I did make some adjustments there. Good thing about this is we can make it bigger as we get more and more different ores. And then we can also change these to advanced. But we shouldn't need that much energy, hopefully, anyway. That is filling up rather quick. I like it. I like the fact that we can see how much energy we're inputting there. FE style. Right, then I'm going to transform back into my skin of purpleness here. Look at me go. Oh, I'm glitching out. That's because I always die when I transfer them into the bat. But you'll have to deal with it. So I'm going to end the episode there. I've been Nebs Gaming. You're about to have an epileptic fit. Make sure you like and subscribe. Toodaloo. And I'll see all you wonderful people in a few. Good night.